Hello, everybody. Well, today is the 11th of November, which, as some of you know, is a significant date in terms of history and in terms of what we're told about these big wars where millions of people perish, possibly because of some guy shooting some dude in a car in 1914. So we're going to talk about all of that and much more in just a moment. But first, 11.11 is also important because it is the day of the Telegram Conference 2023. That's right. Telegram.ee being run by Hando from Estonia and his lovely partner Marianne. And all of these speakers are going to be speaking today in Estonia. And that's why I'm here. Can you believe that? They've flown me all the way here to come and talk about my theories to do with history and what I call the history hoax. And I've got a sneaking suspicion that most of these presenters will be talking about things to do with uh, alternative health and lifestyle and business and this kind of thing. I think I'm going to be the only person there who is talking about stuff that is pretty out there, if we're being honest. I mean, even a lot of you guys, a lot of you have been following my channel now for literally years, and a lot of even you are still like, Ah, this history hoax thing, this war hoax stuff, it's its too much, it's too far, you've gone too far, JLB, etc., etc. So if even some of you who've had years and years to get your heads around the history hoax still haven't quite done so, then I'm not sure how well the, uh, the audience will go tomorrow with a 30-minute presentation where I try and outline the, the history hoax stuff. I'm not sure how much the, uh, the audience will be able to to get out of it, but I've done my best. I put together, it took me days and days, hours and hours and hours. I put together, I wrote a script, rewrote the script a couple of times. I recorded the audio, put it together as a video. It took hours and hours to edit all of the different uh, information and clips and images into the video. And it is the most detailed video that I've produced in years, literally years. This is the most detailed thing I've put together. And I'm quite proud of it actually. So that will be making its world premiere tomorrow at this presentation and then of course i'll make it available to the members of johnlebond.com as well at some point subsequent to that but there you have it 11 11 i am here in beautiful estonia this is a photo from uh, summer i would imagine it's not quite this bright and colorful this time of year but yeah estonia goodness gracious me look at that <laughs> near finland near sweden near st petersburg like i'm not that far from st petersburg it's crazy so up here in the Baltics is where I am right now. I've been here before, of course. I was here last summer. Well, last summer. I was here summer last year is what I meant to say. So just over a year ago. But yeah, guys, I was in Bulgaria. And then I got this call from Hando. Hey, I want you to come to this conference and talk about the history hoax. And I was like, Hando, for you? Sure. Why not? So here I am. So I got a plane from... Well, I got a... Bar, no, I got a... What did I do? I got a train from... Look at this. I got a train from Plovdiv to Sofia. Stayed there the night, and then the next day, got a plane to Istanbul, down here, and then a connecting flight, all the way up here to Estonia. And I arrived here a few days ago, and it's been, like, it's only been a few days that I've been here, but I feel like so much has happened. It's been a terrific four or five days, much better than I expected, I have to say. And I don't think I'm going to be going back to Bulgaria quite the same person as when I left. Even though it's only been a few days, it really has been quite a... Quite a journey, and I'm sure I'll speak more about all of that and more at some point in the future. But this is Estonia. There you go. So that's the conference. That is Estonia. That's what I'm doing here at the moment. Yeah, yeah, boy. And this is the Telegram page where they're talking about the conference. And if we just scroll down, there I am. This is where they talk about John Le Bon. And if you can read Estonian, good luck to you. This is all about JLB. And uh, yeah, a whole bunch of other speakers as well. Promises to be a lot of fun. The only problem is I think most of these presentations are going to be in Estonian. So I don't think I'm going to understand very much, which is, you know, kind of ironic because even though my presentation will be in English with Estonian subtitles, I'm not sure how many of them are going to understand what I'm saying. This history hoax stuff is, is not for everybody. It's not for everybody. But if Hando says to me, listen, I think my audience is ready for it. Come and speak to these people and tell them about the history hoax. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. I will do it. Let's see what happens. Wish me luck, folks. Okay, now let's get back to this 11.11 thing. Why is 11.11 such a big deal? Well, let's just play a few seconds from this. This is 
the bullet that started World War One, and this was uploaded maybe a year ago, has 1.5 million views. I have fast forwarded it to the key section. So this is meant to be an educational or informational explanation of how World War I began, supposedly. So let's take a look at this. The group's failures at the nearby Moritz Schiller Cafe when a twist of fate changed the course of history. Almost directly in front of the young rebel, the car... So this is obviously a cartoon, uh, you know, recreation of the story of what happened that day. Just take a, a note of the number plate there. This is accurate. This cartoon is historically accurate in terms of that particular detail, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But let's get back to this little video. What happened? So the Archduke is uh, in his car with his wife, Sophie, and they're just cruising around. And uh, there was supposedly another... Someone threw a bomb at their car, but they survived. So they decided, well, we're going to keep driving in this car. No problems. So they just keep driving around, and then disaster strikes, folks. This is back in 1914. This is back in June of 1914, before the so-called war had begun. This is, this is how it all started, folks. Our carrying the Archduke was told to stop, the driver being told of his error. When the car came to a stop and put into a slow reverse, Prince Ip saw his chance. Summoning his courage, he pulled out the pistol Tankosich had given him and at point-blank range shot Archduke Franz Ferdinand in the neck and his wife Sophia in the abdomen immediately after. Both were dead before they reached the hospital. This dude just went up and said, chick, chick, boom. And then, of course, these guys died and then some countries were like, hey, you shouldn't have killed them, so now we're going to start a war with you. And then other countries were like, yeah, well, you can't start a war with them because we got an agreement with them, so I guess now we're starting a war with you. And other countries were like, well, we want some of that action as well. And next thing you know, millions of people have died. Really a, quite a tragic story. Let's watch one more video. Very similar thing. This one has, this is from the History Channel. This has over 350,000 views. Once again, I have skipped ahead to the relevant section. This is very important, folks. I'm, this, I'm going somewhere with this, so just bear with me here. What happened? After gathering their bearings, Leopold drives on to a scheduled meet and greet between the Archduke and local officials. The officials want to take the Archduke on a tour of the city, but Ferdinand instead decides he wants to visit the wounded victims from the bomb attack. He gets back into the car with his wife and has Leopold drive off to the hospital. In all fairness to Leopold, he didn't know the exact route. No map, no GPS. He made a... No, so the driver was just driving around, didn't really know where he was going, took a wrong turn, just happened to turn onto the street where one of the would-be assassins from the earlier assassination attempt, that dude just happened to be having a drink, and then he sees his target once again. Hey, that's the Archduke that we tried to kill earlier. Now we get a second chance. Yeah, yeah, boy. Mistake and turned on to the wrong street. Mm -mm. Unfortunately for Leopold and the rest of Europe, this was the street where Gavrilo Princip, one of the co-conspirators of the earlier assassination attempt, happened to be having a drink. What are the odds of that? The one of the guys who tried to assassinate this dude earlier, yeah, but he failed, the bomb didn't work. He was like, oh man, this, we've been planning for so long to kill this dude, and then the bomb, we threw the bomb to the wrong spot, and shit, man. So they're sitting around having a drink, and then the France Ferdinand turns up once again. Princip can't believe his luck. He has an opportunity to finish out what he started earlier that day. <gasps> chick, chick, boom. Chick, chick, boom. Yeah, yeah, boy. So that's what happened. And then if we scroll forward, you get the idea. You guys all Russia's ally, this. France, then mobilizes its forces, which causes Germany to declare war on France. In turn, Great Britain declares war on Germany. Austria-Hungary then declares war on Russia. Serbia declares war on Germany. And you guys remember this from school, right? I'm sure you guys were taught this same story in school. This is what happened. Some guy shoots some other guy. And then a bunch of countries are like, okay, I guess, I guess millions of people are going to have to die now, unfortunately. And France and Great Britain declare war on Austria-Hungary. The First World War has begun. Uh-oh. And all because of a wrong turn. Yes, that is the story, goodness gracious me. So we were looking earlier at that car, weren't we? I was saying, guys, take note of the number plate on the car. Let's just see if we can scroll back and find that again. You know what, I've got a better idea. Let's just go to the official story. This is the car. It's in a museum now. This comes to us from Sky News. And this particular article was published on November 11, 2018. 
so five years ago today. And it says this, A I I I I one eight. Franz Ferdinand's prophetic number plate. The number plate of the car carrying Franz Ferdinand when he was shot bears a strange coincidence to the end of the Great War, to the end of World War I. So that is the car. This is the car that Franz Ferdinand was traveling in, according to the story that we just watched. And as you can see there, it's got a number plate. It says AIII118, doesn't it? Okay, so the, let me zoom in here for those of you watching along at home. It says, the car carrying Archduke Franz Ferdinand on the day he was murdered bore a number plate, which became eerily significant four years on. The prince was shot in his car in Sarajevo in June 20, no, 1914, which in turn triggered a series of events leading to the First World War, as we just saw in that video. So there was an earlier assassination attempt. It didn't work. Uh, they decided to keep traveling around in the car with the AII-118. And uh, that's the car, as we just uh, explained a moment ago. Now, why is this? So some of you already know what I'm about to say, but for those of you who don't, this is going to be very interesting, I think. Why would 11... Why would a number plate that appears to say, or could be read as, 11, 11, 18, or five ones and an eight, so 11, 11, 18, or one, 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 eight, however, which way you want to read it, why would I be making a video about that right now? Why is it such a big deal? Why do I talk about this so much? Well, as some of you might know, 11, let's zoom in for those of you watching at home, yeah, boy. 11, 11, 18 just happened to be the end of the war at least according to the Armistice. So Armistice Day, later known as Remembrance Day in Australia and other Commonwealth countries, and Veterans Day in the US, is commemorated every year on November 11 to mark the Armistice, signed between the Allies of World War I and Germany. And so the cessation of the uh, stuff was meant to happen at the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month, 11, 11, 18. Now that's four years after the supposed assassination of uh, the Archduke. And of course, that assassination, as we just explained a moment ago, was when he was traveling around in a car with a number plate with A111118. So four years, in fact, more than four years, four and a bit years before the end of the war, the event that supposedly led to the beginning of the war involved a car that had a number plate that seems to be remarkably similar to the date that the war would end if you can get your head around this. So, uh, there is no war going on. Some dude's driving around, and someone tries to kill him with a bomb. Doesn't work. Okay, no worries. Keep driving, they drive somewhere else. Whoops, they drive onto the street with one of the conspirators who tried to murder him the first time. This time the guy goes, ah, that's the Archduke, that's the guy I'm trying to kill. Perfect. Chick, chick, boom. And the Archduke and his uh, lovely wife are dead. And... So the war begins, and then four years later, people decide, you know what, that's enough death. Millions of people dead. Uh, you know, entire countries and cities bombed and ruined, and really, it's a big disaster. Time to end this war. And they end it on 11, 11, 18. And the number plate from the car where this all began is AIII118, which could be read as 11, 11, 18, with an A at the beginning, kind of like Armistice, right? Goodness gracious me. So let's continue with this new story. Sky News says pulling the digits apart differently can be interpreted as 11 11 18. The armistice was signed on 11 11 18. Sky's royal commentator Alastair Bruce tweeted, thinking of irony, that the car in which Archduke Franz Ferdinand was shot in Sarajevo bore the number plate A11118. Armistice 11 11 18. Spooky, he says. All right, so then somebody writing for the Smithsonian says that the data link first came to light. Now, remember, this happened in 1914 through 1918, okay, 100 years ago, more than 100 years ago. But somehow, this amazing coincidence was only spotted, only came to light when a visiting historian was in, music, was in Vienna. He noticed this, uh, this amazing coincidence in 2004, folks, three years after 9-11. Three years after 9-11... A historian is like, hey, that car that you've got, that's the car that Franz Ferdinand was killed in, uh-huh. And the number plate 
says 11, 11, 18. Yep. And that's the end of the war. Uh-huh. And they're like, yeah. He's like, well, don't you see, can't you see the significance of this? And they're like, actually, now that you mention it, yeah, that is strange. Well, what are the odds of that? So, speaking to the Daily Echo at the time, Mr. Preslin said, while researching at the Vienna Military Museum, I was accompanied by one of the directors. I mentioned the significance of the registration number. At first, he could not believe it. We both immediately went to another part of the museum to where the car was on display and confirmed the registration number. He informed me that he had worked in the museum for 20 years and was unaware of the connection. So what they're saying in this news story is that one of the experts who worked at the museum, one of these historian dudes, with the number plate right in front of his face for 20 years, it never dawned on him, hold on a second, that's, this number plate is the same, that's the, that's the day when the war ended officially, the armistice. What the hell are you up to that? And so one of the reasons why I find this story so remarkable and so important to understand is that even according to the official story, the people who you would think would be the experts on this stuff and would be the ones explaining this stuff, realizing this stuff, they're even saying, no, we, for 20 years we didn't even notice that. Didn't even notice. That's interesting. That's interesting that you point that out. Hmm. 11, 11, 18. What an amazing coincidence. Now, people can come back to me and say, oh, well, JLB, are you saying that this is proof? I'm not saying this is proof of anything. I can't explain to you how this has happened. I have got my theories, though. We might come back and talk about that in just a moment. But first, over at Conspiracy No Poll, the Conspiracy No Politics subreddit, more than 60,000 subscribers and growing every day, this war hoax topic has been a big deal for the past few weeks. Going right back to when I made a thread saying, how old were you when you realized that nuclear bombs are a hoax? That was my question. Got over 600 replies. In fact, the Conspiracy No Poll subreddit got brigaded by a bunch of normies from a different subreddit. They decided to come and laugh at JLB and all the other people who don't believe in war. Ha ha ha, can you not believe in war? Blah, blah, blah. And let me tell you, when I found out what the subreddit these people came from, I decided to pop over to their little subreddit. And I decided to ask them some questions. And within a day or so, they had removed their uh, thread. So it went from, hey, guys, there's this crazy dude who doesn't believe in war. Let's all go and mock him. And then I found out where they all came from. So I went to their little hidey hole and I started asking them some questions. Some questions about why do they believe in these magical weapons that can supposedly wipe out millions of people at the press of a red button. Just some basic questions like, have you ever seen one? No. Oh, but we know atomic theory is real. Oh, really? Have you ever seen an atom? No. No, you haven't. Okay. So you haven't seen the weapons. You haven't seen the things that these weapons are supposedly based on. But you have 100% confidence that these things are real to the point where you will come and harass other people just because they don't believe. You'll find people who don't believe in this stuff and you will go and harass them for not believing in something that you, by your own admission, have never seen and will never see. And that supposedly happened, they dropped a couple of these bombs back in the 40s. So we're talking 80 years ago. So something that supposedly happened 80 years ago, but you've never seen with your eyeballs and never will see with your eyeballs. You have complete faith in it to the point where others who don't believe, this is such a big deal for you that you're going to go out of your way to harass them. And so you see, when you start thinking through it like this and pointing it out to people, hey, you're acting a little bit dogmatic now. If you believe in something that you've never seen, it might be true. Maybe it is real, but you haven't actually seen it. Other people who are called experts, who call themselves experts, authorities, they tell you it's real. And maybe it is real, but you've never seen that. So you have some, you have some faith in these people. And some of them, to their credit, do admit it's faith. Some of them, to their credit, do admit they've got faith in the so-called experts. And this is a faith-based belief, which I'm cool with. If you can just admit it, that's cool. But a lot of these people, a lot of these science believers, they don't realize it's a faith. They think all the, the crazy Abrahamic religions and all these other belief systems, they're the crazy ones. They believe stuff based on faith. They're the ones who don't have evidence. It's not based on logic or reason or any of this stuff. It's not based on empirical information. No, it's, it's all faith. It's what they think about the other religions. But that's what I think about them. And some of you who are watching this right now, those of you who are still absolutely convinced that nuclear bombs are real, or even rewinding a little bit, that millions of people died 80 years ago, 100 years ago, in these great wars, the Great War and World War II. Millions and millions of people died, supposedly. Why? What's the story? Walk me through your story here. 
some dude was in a car with his wife. Some dude tried to bomb him. Didn't work. But then he saw the same guy later on when he was having a drink. And he went, chick, chick, boom. And on that guy's car were numbers and uh, symbols, basically, like 111118. That seems to foretell the end of the same war four years later. That's what you believe. Is that what you're telling me? If you do, that's fine. If that's what you believe, like good, good luck to you. Hopefully, though, you can see why people in me are saying, you know what? If I wasn't trained to believe this story by school, and if I wasn't conditioned by movies and documentaries and TV shows and all kinds of, uh, shall we say, propaganda, can we call it that? If I hadn't been told these stories over and over, would I believe it? Would I believe this story? I don't think I would. In fact, I don't. And I want you to tell me in the comment section below, do you still believe? Please tell me, folks. When did you first find out about Franz Ferdinand's car and the number plate? Okay, when did you first make the connection? And what do you think of it? How do you explain it? I've got some explanations. And in fact, I've been talking about those explanations over at johnthebond.com. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes below. But for now, I want your comments. What do you make of this? Do you, is this to you just a coincidence? Do you look at this? Do you see this and think, yeah, that's just a coincidence, not a big deal. It's just a, you know, could happen, whatever. Is that what you think? That's cool if it is. I just want to know. Let me know in the comments section below. And just recapping this video, in about, uh, I don't know, 12 or 14 hours, I will be giving the world premiere of my new History Hoax video, 30 minutes, summarizing all the key points from the very beginning. How did I even start thinking to myself, is history real? I go right back to the start and work my way through to today. And it's a very detailed video, and I'm looking forward to presenting it, even though I suspect a lot of the audience probably this is not their this is not their cup of tea i suspect doesn't really matter hando is very much into this history hoax topic and he wants me to come and give this presentation so that's what i'm going to do and i've had a great time here in estonia for the last four or five days and i've got a couple more days left and i have to say i've had a much like i i kind of left this place last time with a slightly cynical view of estonia and its people so i'm very glad i came back because it's it's i've got a different angle on the place now and uh, this has been a much more fulfilling uh, experience, I would say. It is weird the sun goes down at like 4 o'clock. That is so strange, man. But you know what? There's something charming about that. But anyway, I'm having a good time, so thank you for asking. Yeah, Estonia's going well. Here for another couple of days. And uh, that does include, like I said, this presentation on 11.11. So 11.11 here in beautiful Tallinn, Estonia, giving this presentation. Yeah, yeah, boy. I might put a link to this in the show notes below if you... Want to go and take a look? And of course, I'm here in Estonia. Yes, I'm up here near Helsinki and not far from St. Petersburg. And every now and then you think to yourself, what the hell am I doing here? What the hell am I doing here? Like, firstly, what am I doing living here? Like, what, what, why do I live there for? It's very strange. And then, why do I occasionally jump on planes and go to places like this? This is a very strange life that I'm living, folks. Very strange life indeed. A man with a laptop and a microphone. And a whole bunch of ideas that people think are crazy. And yet, when I sit here and go through the official story, and then I say to you, do you really believe that? I think a lot of you deep down, you know there's a problem. I think you know deep down there's a big problem here. But you can let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about the bullet that started World War I in the car with the Archduke? What do you think about all of this? I'll put a link to this subreddit as well if you go and check out all these nuke believers and nuke defenders. Very, very angry people. How come you don't believe in these magical weapons? Everyone believes in them. You're crazy. Leave those comments, like I said, and have yourselves a fantastic day. I'm really suspicious of trees. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? You want to talk about stress? You want to talk about stress? Okay? I've stumbled onto a major company conspiracy, Mac. How about that for stress? With regard to nobody died, nobody got hurt in these wars. Who's cutting my clap? Where's Larry Crown? Remember, you got the flu. It wasn't a tent. It was this magnificent thing. It fooled me. We can't get fooled again. I saw this plane come out of nowhere and just ream right into the side of the Twin Tower, exploding through the other side. And then I witnessed both towers collapse, one first and then the second, mostly due to structural failure because the fire was just too intense. JonBenet Ramsey murdered me. She murdered me. How dare you?